Okay, and this is just going to be uploaded as is. Once I get it edited, there won't be a beginning or anything. Uh, what I ended up having to do, I ended up having to replace the LCD screen on my 3D printer because me like a dumbass, well, I don't think it was me, but I have a weird feeling that a hole got punctured in the FEP sheet. I want to say right around the top where it looks like it's a head there in there and it must have punctured a hole in it because here's the old LCD screen and as you can see by the light reflecting off of it there is cured resin on it and I tried to clean it off and everything and yeah I really didn't want to like break this so I ended up ordering a new one. Now, if you look here, you can see that a circuit board is attached to this screen. If and any of the screens that you order from Amazon do not come with the black tape. Now, you could definitely use electrical tape. I've seen people do that. It's my first time with this, so I really didn't want to do it. So I, I bought the one from AnyCubic. I think it was like a hundred and... 50 some odd dollars I don't remember how much um, how much it was especially with shipping and I had to wait um, but I wasn't sure if that replacement because it just has a wide ribbon cable as opposed to this small one here so I messaged Jenny Cubic and they said that yes it'll work and it comes with two screws to mount the plate on the inside. If you look up uh, replacing the Mono X LCD screen, uh, the kit that they show in their video from Anycubic is the same LCD screen and circuit board and cables that I got. Uh, it'll come in this nice little plastic case and everything. Uh, it does come with the black tape around it. That was the remainder inside. I and probably because of the fact of the way that the machine cut it. Uh, I don't know what the rest of that can be used for because it really doesn't fit anything on the 3D printer itself. But after replacing it... After replacing it, and I'll show you by turning it on, it actually works. Uh, it changes some of the menu settings here. Like if I go into tools and detection, it shows three seconds and you really can't select a pattern or anything. But when you hit next, it actually shows the darkness in the center and everything. And I could have turned up the exposure time, but I didn't. And when you go into exposure and it says, please set exposure time first. Now the exposure time is already 10. And you can't change to anything else. It's just this here, which is wide open. Um, so when I hit next, and you can see that it works the whole way. So I'm hoping that it works. Um, that it doesn't cause me any problems or anything. So right now, that's pretty much it. I do have a new screen protector and new FEP film to install on this and when I get it installed I will show you this because I'm not going to have that happen again. I'd rather have it stuck to a screen protector that I can just jerk off of it and be done with it. Uh, I know that probably wasn't the right words but I really don't care. I think any cubic should have put a piece of glass on this because my other any cubic um, 3D printer. The LCD screen of this is underneath a sheet of glass. and But I, I know it would have been a different design. Oh, by the way, before um, I say anything, there's two little black rubber strips that fill in uh, a little crevice along inside of both sides here. You'll see it in their, in their video when they're replacing the screen. 
you have to remove those black rubber pieces or this screen won't fit the screen that they have the black rubber pieces that are that are stuck in there those support the screen that I showed you that has the circuit board attached to it underneath because it's a little smaller so that kind of gives it a little bit of bumper with those there it will keep these sides raised up and then you'll end up it'll end up breaking when the top comes down so to get it to fit per perfectly make sure you remove those here and again over here and then you put the new tape back on it again like i said if you want to go the cheaper route and buy the cheaper screens from amazon you're more than welcome to and just use black electrical tape that's probably what i'll do the next time uh depends on which i can get cheaper whether it be one like this one or one like the previous one. So I just wanted to let you know that somehow I goofed up this uh, this 3D printer somehow. Just want to get my fingerprints off. So until next time. All right. And as you can see, I have the screen protector on. Uh, the only problem I, I have with, the, with it is the fact that the outer edge here is raised. So there's kind of like a, a little bit of a gap that you can't seal out. But other than that, there's no air bubbles in here. So at least this way now, if I get another puncture in the FEP sheet and it gets on here and it cures... I just peel this off. I've got one more and then I got to order more because it comes in a two pack. So I'll leave links to this and everything. And I'm going to, I still have to replace that FEP sheet on that there. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to do it tonight when I'm recording this. Um, I'll probably do it the next day. So, okay. And this has been printing for some while now. And as you can see, it seems to be working. The only thing I did to this uh, after I put it in, put the screen in and everything, was that I turned the power level down for the LCD screen to 80%. Uh, I know AnyCubix settings on their site recommend 60. So I'll probably change it like another 20% when I run my next test. Hopefully that'll help with the resin curing so hard to the build plate sorry about the lighting and everything i'm using my cell phone but it seems to be working um hasn't really messed up which is nice i've been wanting to print this i think i tried once and it, it and it failed um I mean, I could have been having problems with the screen initially when I first got this and just didn't know. It uh, doesn't seem to be leaking any resin anywhere as far as I can tell, so hopefully I didn't puncture it because I thought I bounced my exacto uh, knife off of it. I'll know once this is done because I'll unscrew it and lift it up and check. But, uh, yeah, this is from Trident studios i believe uh it's the diorama for spider-man and doc ock this is like the first piece of it i have like more on the uh on the flash drive that i just never got to and it's got about 20 hours and 20 minutes to go it's only halfway there i set the layer lines like really thin so that's why it's taken forever. But yeah, I mean, it basically, you know, it seems to be working really well. I was surprised. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so basically I ran into a little bit of a problem. I don't think I put the FEP sheet on right because as you can see here that the print separated from the supports 
but everywhere else from here was fine from the way it looks and I want to show right here near the corner you can see that thick bump there okay and sorry I'm doing this on my phone so my hand is not that steady but you can see that thick line right there well that's a layer shift line and it happens to be on the same side as where the train the the last print that I was printing went I mean it'll still work for the diorama of this guy from Trident Studios um, but you can see there's a little bit of shifting there and that got a little thick there it's not on the original file and it wasn't the um, slicer software or anything of the kind but as you can see it shifted there on the corner and it shouldn't do that and like I said I, I have a feeling it's because of the fact that I didn't do the FEP sheet right I'm gonna try it again and hopefully I'll get it to where that doesn't happen but really I mean the model turned out okay you know I mean a lot better than I thought the only um, layer lines you can see is like right there when I printed the uh, Hulkbuster Iron Man and I'm looking forward to painting it and I still have to cut off some support material that is hidden in places and stuff like that but but this was done on my anycubic photon mono x and like i said i still have a little bit of cleanup to do on it and i got some cleanup to do on that too Okay, and as you can see from the video, uh, I didn't have any kind of entrance. I, I had a plan for a different video, didn't kind of come through properly. Um, still working on it. That'll probably be my next one. I know this isn't probably what most people are expecting, considering after the uh, MediaWick video or the Top Thrill Dragster video. Uh, but basically... I don't know if I'm making the FEP sheet too loose, too tight. I got to see how to do it. I followed any cubics recommendations. You put a 13 millimeter uh, piece in there, hold it down and, you know, do the corners, which I did that. And it still didn't come out right. I, there, I guarantee there's something I'm doing wrong. So I have a new VAT coming in. Don't know when I'm going to get it. Uh, at least that way that'll get me printing again and I can experiment with trying to do the, the FEP sheet because I saw somebody else's video where it's like he he does maybe one or two screws on this side, pulls it tight, does that, pulls it tight this way, does, you know, like that. I'm going to try that method, see if maybe that works. Maybe it's too loose, too tight, I don't know. Only time will tell. But... Uh, the next video, which is what it was supposed to be this one, is I'm going to be doing uh, some setting up Active Directory videos for setting up Windows servers. That way, I'm not going to show you how to install the OS. Uh, if you've installed Windows on your own or anything in the past, you pretty much know that. But I'll show you how to set up Active Directory, um, work with the... Active Directory users and computers. Um, show you how to set up DNS, DHCP, stuff like that. So, But as I always like to say, have a good day, guys, and take care.